to our Monday morning, uh, December 7th response and recovery call. Um, it's hard to believe that we are back into a uh, stay at home order, which is when we started doing these calls many, many months ago. Um, thanks to those of you who might be joining us for the first time in a while. We have been doing these calls weekly since March. My name is Bettina Swigger and I am the CEO of Downtown Slow. Um, I do want to acknowledge that Governor Newsom is speaking live right now, so there may be a couple of people who are paying attention to him, and this meeting is being recorded, so if you would prefer to watch the governor instead of me, I will completely understand. I will not take it personally. Um, his remarks are also being recorded if you would like to um, watch them later. So. Uh, Thank you all for being here today. I know this is a, a challenging time for us and the howling wind outside does not um, necessarily add to the positive vibes. But we still remain here as you are downtown slow business association um, to hopefully provide some um, guidance and support and a little bit of um, holiday cheer despite everything that is going on. So um, hello specifically to our Downtown Slow Board of Directors. We have a closed meeting of our board tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. And um, at this time, I wanted to just uh, invite our board president, Pat Arnold, to say a couple of things. Good morning, Pat. Hello, thank you for uh, logging on. I see we have 40, uh, 42 people on here. Um, should I talk about the nominations too, Katina, or are you gonna do that later? Sure, go ahead, yes. Um, well, I'm going to do three things then. First of all, thank you for logging on. We're entering many months of this and, and we've had a lot of feedback and support and guidance as to what's important to you. And it is all taken very seriously and it's how we craft our message each week. So thank you very much. Um, two things I have. One, Rachel will put in the chat link. As soon as she, I think she probably got the email by now. Um, there was a petition that was started by the... Um, San Luis Obispo County Chambers, as well as the Wine Alliance. I'm pulling it up as we speak. But it was basically a petition to for Governor Newsom to be able to have our county, our, not so much the tiers, but our stay-at-home order be, be adjusted according to our ICU counts, probably the easiest way to put it. There's obviously more metrics than that, but at the end of the day, we are in a region and a uh, stay at home, home order due to our ICU uh, percentage of availability. So um, a lot of people have already signed it. It is growing and it's something, at least I personally and quite a few of us feel very strongly about that our region should be either uh, grouped with other units, um, our county itself, all the above. So we're working on that. So please take a look at the link and we will continue to have updates on that. Second, uh, we will be <clears throat> heading out in January with a new slate of board of directors. So we have reached out to quite a few people, but I would still like to reach out to more. So we will have it in our weekly emails, we'll have it in our social media, but also I asked the 44 people on here now that if you would reach out to anybody you know that would be interested in uh, being on the board, and if the board is not uh, something they want to do right now, at least to be involved, but we're looking for uh, a number of people that are willing to do it. Uh, it's at least, uh, you know, a couple hours for each board meeting. And then there is a couple of extra hours throughout the month uh, minimum that we would need support and help with. So all of you on the board know what it takes and are, are excellent ambassadors for that. And then all of you on the call know how much we all care about downtown. So please reach out, send them to me, send them to Bettina, and we will, uh, meet with them either virtually or, or uh, uh, walk around when we can and describe what the job entails. So thank you much. Great, thank you, Pat. Appreciate that very much. Um, and so uh, our Downtown Slow Board again will meet tomorrow and I look forward to seeing the 17 of you who are on the Board of Directors uh, tomorrow morning for a more in-depth conversation about our organization. Um, and with that, I'm gonna invite our, um, our, our organization's COO, Rachel Meyerino, to talk a little bit about where we are in today's reality. Rachel? Thank you, Bettina. Uh, so as of Friday, San Luis Obispo County was at 600,540 cases of COVID-19 that have been reported. The city of Slow accounts for 1,527 of those cases. 
Uh, in the past 15 days, 11 people with COVID-19 have died in our community, and the total number of deaths due to COVID-19 is now at a total of 42 in San Francisco County. Our condolences go out to their loved ones, um, especially as we're seeing these numbers um, increase. Testing is available for those who are symptomatic or people now who are asymptomatic who may have been exposed. Um, on the next slide, we can dive a little deeper into the new regional stay-at-home order. So as Pat mentioned, um, there are now five regions that the state has been broken up into. On the top, we have Northern California, Greater Sacramento, Bay Area, San Joaquin Valley, and San Luis Obispo is included in the Southern California region, um, which as we know, we kind of don't fit really in to a lot of places, but unfortunately, now we are included in the Southern California region, meaning that the ICU capacity for that entire region is linked to this new stay at home order. So since the ICU capacity at the bottom is now at 10.3% remaining in the Southern California region, um, that is definitely below the threshold. And basically once we went below the 15% threshold, that is what sparked 24 hours after going into the new regional stay at home order. If you could progress to the next slide, Bettina. So in regions that trigger that order, which we are included in, um, that means that operations will need to close in the following sectors. So indoor and outdoor playgrounds, hair salons, barber shops, personal care services, museums, zoos, aquariums, don't think we have any of those downtown, movie theaters, wineries, bars, distilleries, family entertainment centers, card rooms, wagering, um, limited services, live audience sports, and amusement parks. Moving to the next slide, businesses that are permitted. Um, I won't read all of this in depth, um, but outdoor recreational facilities uh, for purposes of you know, personal health and wellness, making sure to still get outside um, without food or drink or alcohol sales, um, and outdoor camping is not permitted. Retail is allowed at 25% capacity um, with somebody metering, uh, no eating or drinking inside stores, and with addition of special hours for seniors or those with chronic conditions. Uh, shopping centers are allowed at 20% capacity, again with the same pieces as retail above. Hotels and lodging are now only for COVID-19 mitigation and containment measures or essential workers, as well as measures to protect homeless populations. Restaurants for takeout or delivery, offices, remote only except for critical infrastructure where remote work is not possible, and places of worship and political expression are allowed for outdoor activities only. With that, Bettina, I will kick it back over to you. I know we will probably have more questions on this or need more um, pieces. So if anyone has any questions so far, feel free to place them in the chat. Great, thank you, Rachel. And just a few notes on this. Um, we are aware of the, the retail being open at 20% and we'll talk more um, in a few minutes about how you can leverage your business listing on our organization's website to um, link out to any virtual shopping experiences you might have or um, special shopping hours. Um, we know that this is a critical time for retail and we will be doing a, a big lift over the coming weeks to encourage people to shop locally. And we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, just recently, uh, five minutes ago, the governor did announce that there is now a contact tracing app available on uh, your telephone so that you can be notified when you've been exposed to a COVID positive individual. And um, <clears throat> I was personally very excited to see this. This is something we've been talking about for many months and has been very successful in other countries but hasn't gone uh, active yet. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, download that if you have it um, on my iPhone. It was very easy. I just went into the settings. I looked for exposure notifications, which you can kind of see right here. Um, and I clicked on that and it gave me the option to uh, turn on those notifications. So 
um, interesting to see how we're using technology, not just for keeping in touch with all of you through these Zoom meetings and allowing for online shopping, but also how we can really be more aware of how the disease is spreading throughout our communities. So this slide might be a little bit of a blast from the past for those of you who were maybe joining us for the for, uh, back in March when we were in the first stay at home order. But we are really encouraging people to support small business in downtown in a number of different ways. So even if your business may be um, shut down for outdoor service um, or shut down um, in general, we are encouraging people to support our service workers, to buy gift cards, to write online reviews, and get takeout and delivery. And um, we'll be continuing this message. This is part of our message of us being a community. We know that our city and our region values our downtown, and downtown is where the majority of the retail and shopping takes place. So um, our hearts are with you, and our brains and our creative energy is as well. I wanted to share a little bit of uh, statistical analysis for you. We, um, before all of this had gone on, we, we had partnered with a group called MySidewalk.com um, to do an economic dashboard. And we're able to track through this system um, our unemployment rate in San Luis Obispo. And it's interesting to note that the most recent unemployment statistics are from the Bureau of Labor Statistics came out for October. And the unemployment was at 5.7. Um, and that's a little bit lower than it is in the United States and definitely lower than it is in California. Um, but it's much higher than it has been um, for our annual average in San Luis Obispo. And I think it's worth discussing this because um, here's just another chart of that data. You can see where the spike happened was in the original shutdown. And I think we can play this forward so that when we look at the uh, this chart a few months from now, we'll see another spike in unemployment as people go back to being furloughed um, due to their services not being allowed to operate. So we'll be keeping our eye on these figures and um, we're especially concerned because the top occupations that have been impacted by COVID-19 are food preparation and serving. We know that personal care and services. We know that we see you. Um, arts design, those are some other ones, um, and then we go on down the line. But it is by far our restaurant workers and our um, service providers, our hairstylists, our estheticians who have been impacted the most and have gone on this roller coaster just back and forth, back and forth. Um, so with that, I saw a question in the chat that um, an additional discussion about free parking would be helpful. Um, I'm not sure if Gavin is on the call right now. Gavin, are you on the call right now? Don't see him, he's probably on another meeting, but we will be talking about parking and perhaps uh, Lee Johnson from the City of Slow can take on that, uh, that piece. So with that, we invite speakers each week to share their perspectives from every sector of the economy. And up first, we have Courtney Kino from Cal Poly. Courtney, good morning. Good morning. Um, thanks for giving me this time, and um, I hope you all are doing well. You may notice my background. Um, we had our virtual, virtual commencement take place on Saturday, and um, Cal Poly alumnus and NASA astronaut commander Victor Glover gave the commencement address, um, literally from the International Space Station, so um, it was pretty neat. You can catch that on our Facebook page if you'd like to check it out. In terms of um, coronavirus updates, looking forward, I'll touch on a few things that have to do with winter quarter since we are not in session right now. Um, that includes our move-in plans, testing requirements, and then our academic plans. So for move-in, um, the university is going to have a staggered move-in process over the first week of winter quarter. That means that students will be able to move into campus anywhere between December 3rd and the 9th. And this is to reduce the potential for students to unintentionally bring or spread COVID after their break. Um, for testing, I've talked about this before, but we are increasing our testing requirements for students that live on campus or access campus for any reason. Uh, that includes a requirement to get for all students coming back to the community 
that live on campus or access campus, as I mentioned, to get a negative test three to seven days prior to their return. And they have to submit that to us. They also have to get a test immediately once they arrive. And that includes before moving into their residence and they have to get the test and then basically quarantine until they get the results back from that test. Three days later, they have to get another test and then we're gonna require them to test twice a week for the first two weeks and then throughout the quarter. Um, as I've mentioned before too, we are strongly encouraging, we can't force students who live off campus and aren't coming onto campus to do that same schedule. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't know if you can hear the saxophone. My son is in junior high and practicing. So um, in terms of our academic plans, we are following a very similar schedule to what we did in the fall quarter with about 11% of our classes in person. And um, we're working on a number of ways to encourage enhanced adherence to all the public health guidelines, including some student ambassadors, which is an idea that we've talked about in this meeting previously. So those are our big updates for this morning. Thank you, Courtney, and thank you, Cameron, for the musical accompaniment. Um, <clears throat> has there been any discussion about the new stay-at-home order and whether that will affect people not being able to travel back if they've left? No, because it's considered an essential service to attend college um, within the guidelines that we, um, that we are operating within. Okay, got it. All right, well, congratulations to those graduates. I know we saw a number of celebrants uh, around downtown over the weekend, so um, hopefully they were providing some um, much needed revenue for your restaurants and your shops before we went into this next segment. And now um, we'd like to invite Lee Johnson from the city of Slow. Lee, how are you this morning? Good, Bettina, can you see and hear me? I can hear you, yes, yes. Excellent. All right, <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff here to cover, so I will do my best. Um, on the regional order, um, that basically uh, is out there so everyone's aware of what's happening. One of the things that keeps changing is the hotel requirements. They literally were changing over the weekend while we were looking at them. So keep an eye on that. If you are a hotel, please contact Molly um, at the TV, you know, at the city. Uh, she is the one who's most up to speed as those regulations are changing uh, basically all the time at this point. Um, on the regional order, the big questions that we got over the weekend um, were related to outdoor fitness. And as that looks, outdoor fitness, fitness in the parks, gyms who are set up in their parking lot, um, all of that will be allowed. We're getting final clarification from the county, but that's what that looks like at this point. Um, the other one, other question is outdoor, I won't call it dining, outdoor eating um, in the parklets and in the plaza and in private parking lots. Uh, one of the questions is, could you have, allow people to eat there, but have it unserviced? So in other words, you get your takeout, you take it to the parklet, you eat, you throw away the trash. Um, can you do that? So... <laughs> There's two schools of thought that yes, you are because you, there's no restrict prohibition on outdoor eating in the order, but there is another school of thought that you're actually contributing to the spread and that may not be a good thing. So we're trying to get clarification from public health on what we can do in parklets and open in you know, private outdoor areas, that kind of stuff. So we'll see on that as soon as we know we will share it. Um, there's also questions about the grouping, kind of as Pat Matt mentioned earlier, um, and at least some of what I have seen is not all those groupings have been in use for a long time, so those different regions, and that's the mutual aid that they've had, so they use that same map to come up with these uh, regions. Um, another thing to be aware of is while the Bay Area is not technically in the regional stay-at-home order, they all voluntarily went into it early. So basically every region we are contiguous with is under the stay at home order. So there is some concern from the general population about being on our own as our own county. What would happen to us if we were open? 
and be within one day's drive of 75% of the population of California, what that might do to us health-wise. So there's a lot of discussion on that. I, my experience is the state doesn't do a whole lot of changing, at least in the short term, but we'll see the counties working on that. If we learn more, we will communicate it. Um, Thank you for pointing that out, Lee. I want to also just chime in and say that, you know, the part of the mutual aid agreement is that if we were overcome by some kind of a disaster, say there was a fire or something, and we had a number of people who needed to go to the hospital, under that command, then we would send our extra patients to hospitals right. in that region. So it's designed to benefit communities, not to hurt them, is kind of my understanding. Yeah, and generally, People notice the times when they get hurt. Right. Don't really complain about the times they get helped. That's the general rule of thumb I've come to experience with people. So, you know, it, it is, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, my hope is that I, I agree with Dr. Bornstein and, and Wade that let's use this, let's take advantage of it, let's get our numbers, our cases way down. And when we come out of this, let's go straight into to red or orange so we can get as many people open as possible. But, you know, it, it's changing. We'll see what happens. I did hear some interesting perspectives that another thing that's happening during the pandemic is everyone is looking for someone uh, or group of people to blame for the situation, whether it be the governor or bars or Cal Poly or city, whatever. Um, and maybe we should all spend a little more time looking at ourselves and making sure that we're doing all the things that we should be doing like not gathering in groups and not being unmasked and all those kind of things, because it's probably only luck that we haven't either gotten COVID or spread COVID. So just some food for thought. Um, on the parking front, we are definitely looking at what we can do for more pickup, for takeout spots, for more free parking, all that kind of stuff. The, te the parking team and Public Works is looking at that. We're hoping to have more information uh, as we progress through this week to be able to share with everyone. Um, we're also going to council tomorrow night to do another um, or another grant program for small businesses. So this time, instead of 250, I think it was last time, it'll be 500,000 this time. And that, if we get approval from council, we'll roll that program out as quickly as we can. Um, we are also doing um, what we're calling right now um, a buy local bonus program. I'm not sure if everyone's familiar with what the TBID did with their rainy day fund, but basically the idea here is um, we will allocate a certain amount of money um, per month. Right now, the, I think the total is 250000 We'll split that over the you know, December and the first quarter that we would buy gift cards from local businesses. If people spend, let's say, $100 in retail and restaurants within the city of Slow, they can turn those receipts in to get a $20 or $25 gift card from another local business. So we're working on the details of that. Um, we're hopeful that council will approve it tomorrow night, um, but we'll see. And then in that um, item for council tomorrow night is also additional funding for specifically for downtown, um, for more clean and safe, more homeless services. Uh, we also have a homeless services kind of coordinator position in that request as well. So there's a lot happening. We're trying to do as many things as we can to support everyone and we'll learn more tomorrow night after the council meeting. Uh, basically, that's it from my notes. Uh, Bettina, do you have any other questions or anything? Yeah, um, I know there's a lot going on right now, but that is an important city council meeting. Uh, we've also been contacted by the Active Transportation Committee, and the Active Transportation Plan is coming below before council, I believe, for initial review tomorrow night. Um, there are definitely elements of that that are important to the downtown, including uh, the installation of some more permanent bike lanes. So if you are um, sitting at home and you want to tune into that city council meeting, I recommend doing that. Um, we, if people have questions about their specific business operations, I know you say this every week, but how, is, how should they contact you and what is the protocol? Uh, well, we, I mean, we have the hotline that people can call. Um, which you can report people who are not following the guidelines. You can ask specific questions, all the different stuff. And that hotline is 805-783-7835. Um, and if you press the option to ask a business question, it ends up coming to me anyway. So it's probably easier just to call my mobile if you have a question related to your business. 
And my number is 805-710-1824. Again, 805-710-1824. Or you can email me at ljohnson at slowcity.org. Great. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right, up next, we're going to invite uh, Jim D'Antona with the Chamber. Hello, Jim. How are you this morning? I'm good, Bettina. Thanks for having us, as always. Um, so I just want to kind of want to quick start up um, with uh, later today, actually, um, in an hour and a half, we'll be kicking off our first uh, event uh, of this week, um, which is called Think Differently, working with the city of SLO. Um, to think, uh, show you how to maybe do your events differently, reimagining events uh, during this time, and now again, uh, even more important. So uh, it's free. Jump on over from twelve to one thirty. Got some great people talking about how to do that, and maybe even if it's not events, you'll figure out something more how to look at your business and do work um, during this. Uh, very difficult time. So uh, we invite everybody to join us 12 to 130. Just sign up um, through the link that just went into chat. Uh, additionally, we finished uh, during the month of November, we uh, did a uh, business impact survey from northern Santa Barbara County all the way to uh, North Slow County. Um, trying to get everybody's opinions and obviously about midway through that business uh, survey result from we ran it from the 9th through the 30th uh, the slide back to the purple tier happened so found some really interesting survey results in there 30% um, of the people who took the survey said they had they uh, anticipated hiring uh, people and so we're Obviously, um, this will not help towards that. So we're going to kind of follow up again to see where we're at, because that was great news to see people thinking about hiring, bringing new people on. Um, we know that this is that's going to change based on what's happening right now. Uh, but we, you know, it's it really disappointing to see that we got so close and to kind of starting to move back into that normal. So as Lee said, hopefully we can really focus on um, what Penny and Wade brought up is that get through this and come out in a much better place uh, so that we can jump right back into that as soon as possible. Um, so check out the link. You can see the, the results um, and find out like kind of again how we are looking regionally and what people are feeling like. Um, our next item is for tomorrow. We actually have an employment law update. Uh, we do this every year before the start of the year so that you know what you should expect for 2021. Um, obviously a lot has changed during this time. And so we would recommend, uh, even if, you're, if you think, well, I have remote workers or if I have other parts of my business I really don't need, like everybody's gone, you really should still follow up on this because A, how you communicate with your employees, the essentially the, all those big uh, posters that you usually need to post, you actually do need to send those to your employees if they're working remotely um, so that they have all the law, the newest laws. So again, we're kind of working all through that with some great, we have Kathy Upright, Dave Yonke talking about those things um, and giving you the assets you need to look at 2021 employment law. Um, and so that's, that's tomorrow from 12 to one. Uh, it's always a great program. We do it every year um, and get really great information from two top notch uh, 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 business attorneys on that. And then finally, obviously, uh, uh, Pat talked a little bit about it at the start. We just had the letter to the governor um, go out asking uh, for an exemption. Um, uh, to be honest, obviously, the biggest point for us, we certainly get the point that if we were the only one open in a wide area, we might have a focus of people coming here. Uh, but really the most important for, you know, what we were talking about, all the group of chambers and the wine associations who talked about it was um, if we were with the group in the north, even though they voluntarily closed, um, is it possible we would end up opening earlier because we have one person in the ICU? So we're, we're talking with Jordan Cunningham, talking with our county supervisors, talking with those folks, um, you know, as... Uh, Pat talked about we have the petition to just click in and sign uh, for us to try and find a little different solution we get it from the mutual aid agreements uh, that going south 
um, sometimes works, but we could just as easily go north uh, for some of these things. And in other mutual aid agreements, that is how it works. So we're just trying to find what it gives us the best option. A, we agree you, in order to have a healthy economy, you have to have a healthy community. Um, but we also don't necessarily uh, need to be um, put to the standards of what LA and Southern California are dealing with. Uh, we're a little different on that region. So we're sharing that, we're keeping that conversation going. Um, we will keep, uh, obviously, down. we know that Downtown Slow uh, and all the work they're doing fits right into the same model. So we'll keep everybody updated and share out any other information that comes out. Um, we just really get how bad this is and how hard it is. Um, and obviously, we want to make sure we do whatever we can to keep our uh, economy moving and our folks employed um, and any kind of ability for um, the stimulus money is not just from the federal, there is the state money, the state stimulus package. If you haven't signed up for it um, to get notice of when that's coming out, you should. Um, you can go, our, our email this morning had it at the bottom. Uh, the state is going to release a grant program uh, that actually works for 501c3s and 501c6s. Um, so all of those things, you know, make sure you stay in touch and we will do the same. Thank you, Jim. Um, that's a great segue. We are going to have our next speaker is um, Judy from the Small Business Development Center. So we'll hear more about what those um, those opportunities are. And we also sent out um, in the email that invited you to join us today, there was a link to that the California Governor Business um, Update. I am curious, Jim, though, if you have had any conversations with your cohort in the chamber world about unemployment and whether there will be more unemployment made available to individuals. Yeah, we've, it's obviously been a big part of our conversation, um, but at the moment it feels, from all the people we're talking to, it feels like a coin flip um, on whether they're actually going to get those um, pieces passed that do that. Uh, obviously, this, that will be a huge hit to our economy uh, that was in the previous shutdown was available to folks. Um, so we obviously don't believe it's great for our economy to have people laid off, have no options. It really does even more damage than what this shutdown has done. So, but so far we have not gotten a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It's kind of a thumb in the middle trying to see if they can pull off the right numbers to get the packages um, passed. Okay. Yeah, I know it's it's changing all the time and it could be that uh, Governor Newsom said something while we're, we've been in this Zoom room together too. So um, we'll see about that. Um, as far as business relief goes though, we will now, um, I'm going to switch. Thank you, Jim. Um, I'm going to switch speakers and we're going to invite Judy to come on and, and say a little bit about what is coming from the governor's office. Good morning, Judy. How are you? Hi, good morning, Bettina. Uh, thanks for having me here this morning. Um, so I'm going to share my screen to give you some updates on what's uh, currently available. But uh, as, as you all mentioned, uh, a lot is in flux right now and we don't have any um, uh, firm um, processes in place yet to be able to tap into these programs quite yet. But we know it's coming. Uh, at least this gives you a snapshot on, on what we can expect. So I will share my screen. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, let's see. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, trying to get into the, oh, here, here we go. So I'll launch right in. Uh, I am the director of the Small Business Development Center for Slow County. Uh, just as a quick reminder, I just want to explain uh, what are SBDCs. Uh, there's about a thousand SBDCs throughout the US. We provide um, consulting um, assistance and guidance and coaching uh, to any business owner. Um, uh, and we were specifically focused on uh, San Luis Obispo County. So anyone who owns a business, any employer, any sole proprietor for that matter, any freelancer can sign up with us and we can provide assistance and guidance um, on uh, all business needs. So not just um, 
uh, disaster lending, but also any other needs you might have uh, to help develop and grow your business. Uh, so that's sort of us in a snapshot. We have 34 consultants on board uh, that are available to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, all of our services are free. So these, these, are, these are your taxpayer dollars at work. Uh, we're here to help you. And so, you know, feel free. I'll, uh, our contact information is at the end of the presentation. So any questions relating to your business, please feel free to contact us. Um, so right now, um, one program that has been launched is the California Rebuilding Fund. Um, I, we're still trying to figure out who within the county is participating in this fund so that they can help process the loan applications for our employers here locally. Um, it's a program that is being spearheaded by iBank and numerous other stakeholders are part of this fund. Uh, this is an opportunity to obtain more loan capital um, through our local community lenders. Uh, in the maximum that's, that uh, any employer can uh, ask for is $100,000 or 100% of three months of your average revenue in 2019, early 2020. Um, so whichever is the highest of the two, no, sorry, not the highest of the two. 100K is the max. Um, so we do that calculation to figure out what you can tap into. Uh, the loans right now are being um, processed at an interest rate of 4.25%, and there are two options. It can be a 36-month term or a 16-month term for repayment. Uh, the first 12 months are um, interest, uh, interest repayments only, so there is some, um, uh, they do try to provide some assistance here up front for the first 12 months to minimize the payments that um, you would owe. Um, <clears throat> What businesses are eligible? You, if you have more than 50 full-time employees, you are not eligible for that program. So it is limited to 50 full-time employees max. Um, you must have 2.5 million in revenue or less. So anyone who has more than 2.5 million in revenue would not qualify for this program. Um, and you do have to pro prove economic hardship that uh, your revenues have gone down uh, in the last six to nine months. Uh, so there are some parameters in place uh, to qualify for this type of loan. I did put here in the in this slide, and I'm, I'm gonna. Um, oops, sorry. Um, I will I will send a uh, copy of that link and put it in the chat right, right after the slide presentation so you can connect to it directly. Um, another program is the Small Business Loan Guarantee Program. Um, there are actually two forms of this program and I need to clarify uh, exactly how uh, the state differentiates those two. One is called the Small Business Loan Guarantee Program and the other one is focused on the Small Business Disaster Loan Guarantee Program. So there's actually two, um, two names, two different versions of this, but for the most part the qualifications are the same, the eligibility uh, portion is the same. Uh, one to 750 employees max. Uh, one means, you know, sole proprietors can apply, uh, nonprofits can apply, so that's important, and any other type of uh, legal entity. So very open, um, very wide net here, open to most, uh, most workers, most employers. Uh, you do have to be able to provide your uh, NICS code. We can help you with that. That's fairly easy to figure out. And again, um, here's a link uh, on the slide deck for the email that you can uh, contact someone directly at um, GoBiz who can answer some questions relating to any of these um, loan programs that I've identified. Judy, a quick question for yeah. you. These two programs that you've just talked about, are either of these designed to be forgivable loans? No, no. No, they are not. That's a great question. Um, so that's important. They're not. Uh, so it's just, they are being more flexible than, um, you know, if you went to your bank and just asked for a straight out business loan, um, you know, maybe a little harder to qualify right now in these times for a, a standard bank loan. Uh, so these do provide more flexibility, uh, are more adaptable. Um, 
more readily available, but it is a loan. It is not forgivable. Um, and so here's our contact information. Actually, before I launch into that, I thought I had one more slide. Um, the idle loan program is still available. Uh, so there is still an opportunity to tap into that for anyone who has not yet filed for an idle loan. That is the disaster loan that was um, uh, put in place back in March. Uh, there is still opportunity to apply for that loan. Um, if you need more information on any of these loans, please do contact us at slosbdc at gmail.com and we can certainly guide you through all these processes. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Great. Thank you, Judy. Um, I know one of the things that we have heard from a number of our businesses is that they really appreciate the access to loan capital, but really what they need is, is relief and grant programs. So I understand that that might be something that we're more going to be looking to the federal government for, but in your conversations with the state, do you see any other additional programs that might be more grant-based? Uh, we are hopeful that there are going to be some programs that are going to um, uh, be approved at the legislative level, but right now there's no, uh, no firm, um, nothing's been approved yet uh, that I can specifically guide employers towards. So uh, we're still at a bit of a standstill. There, there is a lot of hope that's, that I, um, there will be opportunities that will come our way. Yes. Okay, great. And I'll just ask the same question I asked to Jim about unemployment. Have you heard any rumblings about unemployment changing or being in in improved? I don't have any additional information as, you know, aside from what we're all reading in the media, I, don't, I have no specific additional information I can add. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, and I think there are a couple of other events that are coming up from the SBDC that might be helpful for people. Is that correct? Uh, yes, so uh, please do sign up with us. We send out e-blast newsletters with all, uh, we try to provide the latest information, webinars, guidance on uh, anything that's available that employees can tap into. Um, coming up, uh, and I apologize, I was getting this ready uh, last night. Um, I haven't looked at the latest on our training schedule. Yeah. Uh, again, maybe during the talk, I'll go back and check our training schedule and I'll put links in the chat. Um, Olivia Van Hoy, our program coordinator, has put a link in the chat for the California Rebuilding Fund program. Uh, so that link is available. And as, as uh, the discussion continues here, I will add more information about um, what's coming down the pipe for our training schedule. Great, thank you. And Olivia, I see you're on the call too. Um, would you like to add anything? Sure, um, I can hop in here, Judy. Um, Julia. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, for everyone on the call um, today, we do have a coffee and conversation event tomorrow, or excuse me, on Wednesday. Um, we're bringing in Jeff Bocan from Occupy Venture Capital. Um, if you guys don't know already, our coffee and conversations are monthly webinars that we hold um, for community members to um, join conversations from guest speakers of different areas of expertise or different business owners. Um, so on Wednesday, we will have Jeff Bocan joining us. Um, and I will put the link in the chat after I um, speak here. And then one other thing I do want to mention is we do have applications open for our AngelCon event in 2021. So if you are a local startup from Central California, um, feel free to apply for our AngelCon um, event and I will share my screen real quick with our flyer here. Okay, let's see. Okay, so here's our flyer for AngelCon 2021. Um, if you are a local startup, please visit bit.ly slash angelcon startup app um, to apply. We have very limited criteria, so it's very um, simple for an, a startup to apply for this program. Um, we bring in a group of angel investors that Judy trains throughout the year um, to coach through uh, selecting a startup. Um, and so these applications will close on Friday, January 22nd at midnight. Um, and if you would like to apply, the application is $90. Um, so for a $90 um, investment in your application, you could receive $100,000 um, in June. So the return is very, um, you know, 
enticing for our small business startups. So if you have any questions, I will send our email information in the chat and as well as um, the link to Coffee and Conversation and uh, the application to apply for AngelCon. Thank you, Olivia. I wonder if uh, organizations that feel like they're startups but are not in fact startups are eligible to apply for the AngelCon. Um, I know that's what a lot of us feel like. Anybody who's trying to run a small business or an organization right now, we're all kind of doing everything from scratch for the first time. And Bettina, um, I, I would encourage if anyone is hesitant and feels that, you know, well, would I qualify for this program? Uh, just, you know, shoot us an email and we'll, we're more than happy to have that conversation to see, yeah, it's, it's probably worth your time to apply. This could be a fit or not. Um, we're happy to support anyone who has interest. So. Yeah. And I think we've had, um, I've heard some testimonials from a lot of our businesses that have started to partner with the SBDC um, because of COVID. I think they were made aware of the programs that exist. And especially if you have a small business that might be looking to um, up your technology platform, um, that's a great way that we've seen some people connect with your, your um, coaches. So. Thank you. And that's a great plugin. We have an awesome uh, software developer who's now with us. Um, he just retired early uh, from Cal Poly. So a uh, phenomenal uh, computer science professor who's completely available for us to help uh, our retailers or restaurants get online, get the get their menus online, get the get their plugins for um, you know delivery, et cetera. Uh, he can help with all of that. Uh, and we have at least three or four really fantastic digital marketing experts on board. Um, so if you need help with digital marketing, social media marketing, uh, please don't hesitate to connect with us. We can certainly help. Um, uh, yeah, we, we can provide a lot of assistance in those areas. Great. Thanks, Judy. Um, and I think I mentioned this earlier, but we have launched a new website at downtownslow.com and it includes a uh, faster loading business directory. And Whitney Cheney, who normally leads our um, farmer's market, but has not been running that program uh, for many months, has, has really taken on the lion's share of building out that website. And Whitney, if you're out there, could you jump on and show us a little bit about the business directory and how that can be a helpful way to help promote your business in ways that you might not have thought about before? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so we have launched our new website. It loads incredibly fast. It's mobile friendly. It's iPad friendly. It's whatever version of technology you're using in your hands, desktop, mobile, whatever the case may be, it will change sizes to meet that, which is great. That was something that was lacking. Um, but I really just want to call out the business directory platform on here is really the strength behind this website and why we moved to it. So I want to make sure that our businesses are being represented on here, are taking a couple minutes, maybe after this meeting at some point to just kind of do an online health audit. Make sure that your business directory listing on our website is up to date. Uh, the beauty of it, as you will see, Stephanie was so nice and she emailed me uh, a bunch of different photos for the Slow Yoga Center. Um, it has the ability to upload multiple photos. So I want to encourage all of you, if you have new logos, if you have something that's gonna showcase what's available at your retail brick and mortar, um, pictures of food, if you're a restaurant, please email them to me, Whitney at downtownslow.com. I'd be happy to put them on here. Uh, we really want to empower the business listing, make it as useful for people that are trying to get a hold of you. As you can see in this bio here, we have the hours that the Slow Yoga Center retail shop is currently operating. They've also included a tag about curbside pickup and free delivery. I will put as much detail in here as you want. So if there's something that you want your customers to know, uh, since we launched this website a little over a week ago, we've seen 2000 unique visitors come to it. So people are seeking the information and we wanna have it provided. Uh, the SEO, which is kind of how we show up on Google, is another really strong feature of this website. So when people are Googling your name, our listing might show up first, depending on however Google's tracking your website or whatever the case may be. Um, so again, Whitney at downtownslow.com, that's how I can get all the updates for you. Uh, you can link to your Facebook, 
Some other things to think about is our site search feature. You can type in anything in the search function and it's going to populate. So I, I did clothing, for example. So if there's something at your business uh, that maybe people are unaware you sell or some sort of service, uh, you can update your bio so that that tag keyword will show up in those searches. And something else to think about is the, all these tags up in the top under categories. Uh, you can have as many tags as you want. So if you are searching through our retail and there's a tag in there that you think is relevant to your operations, let me know and we can put it on your account so that when people are looking for curbside pickup and delivery, they can start to shop for that. Um, it'll filter through based on whatever you're clicking, home and garden, jewelers, virtual shopping services. I haven't created that yet. I'm making that today. Um, but if you are offering a like a Zoom feature or some sort of virtual way that customers can shop your retail store, whether it's like FaceTime, um, maybe there's private shopping experiences that they can reserve with you, we're gonna put together that resource page as well. I think that's it. Incredible, thank you, Whitney. And just to note as well that uh, we decided to move to this platform because this is a website company that only does um, websites for districts and downtowns. So this is their bread and butter. They understand how to deal with map functionality. They understand how to deal with individual businesses and the, the maps are really exciting and built out. So it's a best practice thought leader in the sector of downtown management. So we're really excited about being part of this platform and we hope that you will use it as a tool during this time because we will be spending our time over the next three weeks um, and beyond making sure that people know how to support local business, um, especially during this busy shopping season. So thank you, Whitney, and thank you to all of you who updated your photos. Um, on a more fun note, we do have, I believe, uh, more than 600 people who have voted for our holiday window decorating showcase for the people's choice. So it's exciting to see people engage with our local businesses. Another new program that is underway, um, just wrapped up its first week, is our new partnership with Capslow, where we are providing dedicated hours of outreach to our unsheltered population. And we wanted to invite one of our outreach workers, um, Maria, to tell us a little bit about what outreach is and how this new partnership is working, because we know that this is an issue that's important to all downtown businesses. So Maria, welcome to our team and thank you for joining us on this sort of strange day as we go into the stay at home order again. Well, thank you. Um, my name is Maria. I work at 40 Prado, which is the homeless shelter on 40 Prado. Um, I've been working here for over a year doing all the intakes for every individual that um, qualifies for our service. Um, so what I do in outreach right now, I'm just trying to build relationships with the homeless population out there. Um, and that's really important because right now, if I ask them what, if they've ever heard of 40 Prado, there is this negative stigma with 40 Prado. Even if they haven't been here, they've heard some things about um, the shelter that um, most of them are untrue. So the first step is for me to build that relationship with them so they can trust me. Um, a lot of people, they would not do well in a shelter setting. So um, one of the things with outreach is to give them the resources that um, they would need to be able to eventually get all the um, services they need like SSI, SSDI, that type of thing and hopefully get them housed. Um, the people that I have been in contact with, some of them I see them every time I've gone out, some of them know. Um, what I'm doing now is I, just to um, have a conversation with them, I have some goodies with me. Um, I have socks, I have hats, that type of thing. So some of them are really standoffish when they see me, I see them, and then I start talking to someone, they just kind of spread out. And so just offering them something and just letting them be and just keep going and building that relationship, that's really important. Um, hopefully my um, colleague Cecil, he is also doing outreach. He does outreach throughout um, San Luis 
And I've seen incredible things that he's done just by having the patience for them to build that trust with him. He's gotten a few people in here that said, no way am I going to Forty Prado. So, um, and also I've been to some of the small businesses just to introduce myself, give them my number and ask if, if they have any questions or concerns. And a lot of times they, they want to know what they can do. Um, this one business owner said, you know, I have people sleeping in here. What do I do? What can I do? What can I, can't I do? So I'm kind of a sounding board with them as well because I can understand their frustration and I give them resources like um, who to call the police department. Um, also, I'm trying to build a relationship with TEMA, which is the Transitional Mental Health Center and try to get them um, because some of the people that I've met have some mental health issues. And so um, trying to build relationships with Tima as well is really important. Um, any other questions? Have I kind of given you a overview of what I'm doing? Does anyone have any questions? That's great, Maria. Thank you so much. And yeah, happy to take any questions in the chat. Um, I had the opportunity just by accident last week, I was in Mission Plaza checking on some of our holiday activations and I got to sort of eavesdrop on Maria and Cecil doing some outreach. And it's, it's really impressive to see the way that, that they um, deal with these, the people who are having a hard time with such empathy and respect. Um, so it's been really educational for our organization also to learn about what Capslo provides at Forty Prado. For example, one of the reasons that there's such a focus on trying to get people to go to Forty Prado is not necessarily even for them to spend the night, but for them to use the day services, which are sort of a stepping stone into that. So could you talk just a little bit about the day services at Forty Prado? Um, with the day services, first off, because of COVID, we can only let people who have been in county for a year and show proof of it. Sometimes they can't, um, so we, Sometimes they, you know, they just got out of jail or something. So um, if we could call someone to verify that they've been in county, then they'll be able to come in or if they have to serve their um, parole here. So what day services entails is that um, we have showers here, we have laundry and those are free. The only thing they have to do is just come in, talk to me and I do their intake. Um, and we have a clothing closet every Monday, and, or if they don't have any clothes except the ones on their back, we'll be happy to take them back there to get them some clothes. We have breakfast and lunch um, for them. And some people we do also have safe parking. Those are people who do not feel comfortable in a shelter setting. And again, that's for people who have been in county for a year. And that requires that people get on case management. That is our goal for everyone. Um, we are considered an emergency housing situation and our goal is to get people housed here. Um, and what that looks like is that if they've been here for two weeks or more, they get a facilitator that helps them get all their paperwork ready for case management. Then they go and do a budget with someone and then they go into case management. Um, case management looks like, you know, continuing to save money and our case managers are incredible at um, housing people incredible. They have relationships with some of the landlords and they don't just put someone in housing and then forget about them. They really um, keep in touch with them to make sure that everything's going okay. And so it's incredible how many people we've housed through that program. If there's a veteran, that's another story. We have um, the veteran program, which means that as soon as we contact the veteran services, they usually just pick them up the next day and bring them into a hotel. So the veterans have a lot, a lot of resources out there for them. Well, thank you, Maria. We really appreciate you, you joining us this morning and we look forward to seeing the progress that's, that you're able to make um, over the, the next year. Um, again, this has just been a program that started last week. So 
Um, we'll see you later today. And if you see Maria out and about wearing her cat slow sweatshirt, please say hello. She is a resource for you. And we're very glad that we're in the same partnership. So thank you. Um, there is also some pretty uh, frightening economic statistics about the increased uptick in homelessness that may be headed our way uh, because COVID-19 is not just a public health problem, but it is an economic problem, as you all know. So we are trying to um, be as holistic in our thinking about this as possible as we move through the various stages of the emergency. Um, and uh, we hope that this is a, a, a service that is, that is helpful. To, to all of you. Um, with that in mind, uh, it feels um, a little bit frivolous, but it still is very important. We have put so much energy, and by we, I mean everybody here um, has put so much energy into enlivening and activating our downtown for the holidays. And the Light Up Downtown program has really been incredible to see come to life. Um, it's been a labor of love and a labor of joy uh, to see each of you decorate your windows and to see the city and Carson Butler events and our organization come together to provide really exciting decorations. Um, we are continuing to um, expect that the activities that we have in Mission Plaza and the various lighting um, selfie stations are going to be allowed. There's no reason why um, people cannot go for walks. The governor has been very clear in his statements about the regional stay-at-home order that we um, are expected to stay at home, but that we can leave to go shopping and to go on walks. So we hope that people will go on a walk through the winter wonderland and all of the activities were, in, were developed with COVID safety in mind. So everything is socially distanced, it's all outdoors. There's a fun scavenger hunt. Um, that people can do that we've partnered with the Children's Museum on called the Search for Santa's Mouse. Very, very fun. So we're really looking forward um, to seeing the results from that. And um, we thank you for, for really making downtown so cheery and bright. Um, we've also partnered with a number of performing arts nonprofits. We now have seven windows that have been activated in the downtown in vacant storefronts. So thank you to the property owners who allowed our performing arts nonprofits to come in and uh, pay attention. I see in the chat that Cal Poly Arts um, lit up the creamery right across the, from Goshi's. There's also a really uh, lovely um, video display at 647 Hygera across from Old Slow Barbecue um, that is a choreographed dance piece that was specifically created about being in quarantine and it's quite a moving performance. You can see a video of that in the window there. So we're planning to still have these lighting activations um, through January 10th. If that changes, we'll let you know, but we hope that this will do a little bit to encourage people to come downtown and do their shopping even during the stay at home order. Um, there are other light up downtown activities on this map. And if you go to downtownslow.com or slowholidays.com, you can see some of the points of interest that include videos projected on walls, over the street lighting um, and projections on the side of buildings. So really a fun program. And thank you to all for your wonderful windows. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that window decorating showcase, we are gonna be having a, a people's choice winner. And there've been, I think 600 people who voted so far. So maybe Whitney, you could put that link in the chat for how people can vote. They can vote on Facebook or on um, Google. So. Thank you to that. And we do still have our produce boxes available. Um, if you want to order from Slow Veg, we will continue to provide that as an essential service during the regional stay at home order. Um, and now we're gonna move into our polls. Um, so I'm expecting there to be a little bit of downward trends here. You can see on the screen, the level of confidence has been all over the map. Uh, this is going back to July, and we have a pretty somewhat optimistic crew around here, but I'm expecting that some of you may be trending downward a little bit today. If you have stepped away, maybe you're opening another window, you're reading your email right now, if you want to come back to the Zoom window and take our poll, the question is today, what is your level of confidence for your business and for the economic well-being of downtown in general? Um, we'll give this just a few more minutes. Um, and then I'm going to end this right 
in about two seconds. So last chance. Yeah, looks like people are feeling pretty grim today, somewhat pessimistic. I, I'm right there with you, you know? I mean, this is, this is quite a journey we've been on and we've been on it together, but some of us have been on it more than others. So um, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Um, today, again, we're gonna ask you, what is your biggest challenge facing your business today? Um, by far, the, the leader in this, this has been the uncertainty of consumer confidence. And there is no question that a new stay at home order is decimating consumer confidence. Um, the pandemic is decimating consumer confidence. The more people who are becoming sick, the closer the disease gets to you, to your family, to your loved ones. When it gets inside of your business, that is, you are a consumer as well. Um, I know my concern for the safety of myself and our employees and my family has really um, ratcheted up in the weeks that have been going on. Um, it's a scary time. This is a, this is a real disease that affects people in uh, very different ways. Those ways can be subtle or they can be profoundly devastating. So we'll go ahead and share the results on this one now. Again, the clear winner is uncertain, certain consumer confidence. And I think it was Jim who said it, we can't have a healthy economy if we don't have a healthy population. We have to get through this pandemic in order to get to a better place, economically speaking. Um, and that's kind of where we're at today. So uh, thank you for being with us this morning. Um, there were a lot of you on the call today. We really appreciate it. We will continue to share out information as quickly as it becomes available to us. Um, we will in post up to the minute information in our downtown slow business Facebook group. That's a private group for all of you. Um, immediate things we'll try to post in our Instagram close friends story and of course by email. We encourage you to sign up for the city uh, business updates if you haven't done so already. They do a great job of sharing out that information. Um, check for the governor's updates and um, please remember to uh, wear a mask and wash your hands and take good care of yourself. Take deep breaths, drink some water, have a nice hot cup of tea. Um, and if there are no other questions at this time, where do we see Gavin's announcement? So um, the governor is, was live on Facebook uh, at the beginning of the hour, and that's where I saw it. Um, you can also look at the, the California COVID website. Um, so encourage you all to be well, reach out to us. If you have any questions, um, you can reach us at reach us at downtownslow.com. And um, thank you for being with us today. Take good care.